Welcome to FSISAC's podcast, Fin Cyber Today. I'm Elizabeth Heathfield, Chief Communications Officer at FSISAC. We're filming here at the EMEA Summit in Berlin, where I spoke with Karsten Fischer, Deputy Chief Security Officer at Deutsche Bank and member of our Europe Board of Directors, about the need for speed in today's threat landscape and how we can and must leverage threat intelligence to stay ahead of threat actors. All right, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time and being here with us. So when I asked you what you wanted to talk about, you said the need for speed uh, in terms of threat intel and threat modeling. So let's start with what exactly is that need for speed? Like, Give us the context of what we're talking about. If I talk about need for speed, this is coming from the perspective of um, vulnerabilities, zero-day vulnerabilities. What we have observed as an industry over the last couple of months, I'd say, is far reduced time between a zero-day vulnerability being announced and the time when an exploit starts. Usually this was, a, I wouldn't say a couple of weeks, but weeks in the past, and it's now days or hours. And there are a couple of reasons to that. So if you look at large language modules, for example, or Gen AI in general, that's helping hackers to find an exploit much quicker than in the past. This is what I sort of mean with need for speed. We need to react quicker to an ever-evolving thread. We see more zero-day vulnerabilities, but especially we see more exploits in the wild and much quicker. And unfortunately, AI is not helping there. On the other hand, what we will most likely and hopefully see as well is that big software vendors will use AI as well to be quicker in finding the patch for the problem mm. of a zero day. So that's what I think um, we all mean if we talk about need for speed being quicker than we have been in the past. Okay, first for the uninitiated, let's talk about the difference between threat intelligence and threat modeling and how they feed each other. For me, threat intelligence is usually just the sheer information, that I have access to that information, that there are companies out there providing us with that information, helping us to educate ourselves on what's going on. Um, threat modeling is always sort of the stage where you are mapping that back to your problem, to the threat that's impacting you, that is relevant to you, where you're starting maybe also to use models like Mitre Attack Framework or others, mm -hmm. and really bringing that into context. Threat intel information, of course, it comes with context, but usually it doesn't come with context for your organization, right. for what you want to do. And this is where you start um, sort of modeling that and then taking action from there. The shortening time frame that you have to react in, what does good look like now with a threat intel and threat modeling program? I would sort of separate that because the need for speed, you will not be able to resolve with threat intel and threat modeling only. Um, it will likely help you and guide you where the problem may be, but a zero-day vulnerability is usually relatively clear in the sense of you have a problem in a certain software product and you need to react quickly and do something. But then you need to wait for a patch to be available. If you don't have a patch, this is where threat modeling plays a role because then you need to start thinking around, okay, what are my compensating controls? Talking defense in depth. Where is the next staggered control that I have that can help me to either detect something is happening there on the zero day or to prevent something is happening whilst I'm waiting for the patch? So that's why they, at the end, go hand in hand. Mm. I would separate them from how I look at that, mm. but that's where I think threat modeling um, can help a lot. Threat intel can help a lot as well because usually you get further information about a zero day vulnerability in the sense of saying, by the way, if you do this and this and this, you can mitigate the problem for now. That could come via threat intel or the software vendor directly. But I think if you combine those forces, mm. uh, you'll hopefully be quicker than before. <laughs> so, all right, so let's talk then about how do we address this need for speed in both with using threat intel and modeling, but also okay, so maybe there's not a patch yet. What do you do? So I think this is then where it plays into your overall security program. You need to think about automating more things than you've done in the past. You need to be more preventive than detective um, because that allows you to be quicker. You need to understand where your compensating measures could kick in, um, where in your threat model you have certain controls in place that would prevent a threat to happen. So you need to have a solid and mature understanding of your environment 
build as much automation as possible, knowing that you can't automate it all. And that's then allowing you to react quicker and create that need for speed. It's also training people on being quicker. Um, in IT, we usually have the tendency to talk about like, yeah, there's a patch, but let's test it. Let's do a dress rehearsal. Let's do that. That's all good. But if you are seeing an imminent threat, you need to be able to react quickly and say, you know what? We don't have time to do a dress rehearsal. We're patching right now. In recent zero days, all of us have seen sort of the threat actor already being on the machine whilst we were patching or whilst we were putting the mitigation in place. And this means we just need to be more active, we need to talk about more, and then we're coming back to threat sharing or intel sharing, we may need to pick up the phone and call a colleague and saying, have you seen that? What are you doing? How are you doing that? Um, so that interaction needs to happen quicker. Yeah, so let's talk about how inf information sharing and intel sharing can be an accelerant, right? So like, we've got to react faster, how can sharing help that? Pick up the phone and call somebody else who's thinking about the same problem. Threat modeling is great. We all have good threat intel teams. We, we all have the right sources to do that. We get the right information. Um, and we think and probably convinced we come up with the right solution as well. But there may be a component that you're missing in that thought or a component that can help you to be even quicker. And that component can often come from just talking to somebody else who's mm -hmm. facing the same problem and has maybe detected something that neither the software vendor was thinking about when they put out the guidance, mm -hmm. nor Threat Intel was talking about. It comes out of the discussion. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why, sort of mapping that to FSISEC, that's why I think FSISEC can play a big role because this is where we create those networks. This is where we come together and then are able to reach out to each other to, to discuss that. But again, I think threat intel and the modeling is the basis for all of that. We mm. cannot rely on or can always pick up the phone and call somebody. That's an additional yeah. driver and connector. So what if you're not Deutsche Bank and you don't have all the resources to build such a you know, robust and mature program? How should you think about you know, this need for speed in today's threat landscape? So I think it, it doesn't really matter whether you are this company, this company, or this company. What, what really matters is how mature are you in your security model? Have you insourced your security model? Have you outsourced your security model? It's the same problem you are facing. If you have outsourced your security um, support and all of that, then obviously you need to talk to your provider to make it work. If you are running that on your own, you need to create that. For me, the key still remains being automating things, building platforms that are connected rather than individual tools. Automate the process to prevent and detect so that you get that speed. So ultimately, you could say you're not doing anything different than you have done before. You're just trying to push automation, threat modeling, and all of that a bit more to be quicker. AI plays a role in that, but AI is also on the other side of the fence. Yeah. Um, it's impacting that, um, that process a lot and it's creating that need for speed. Um, but you can use that for your advantage as well. How do you connect, directly connect threat intel programs to show that having these kinds of robust programs is going to lessen the business impact of an event? At the end of the day, it, comes back to your threat model. If you get your threat model right, it should also help you to see where you have strong controls that you measure on metric, KPI, whatever you want to call it, but you have strong controls that are hopefully effective as well, um, as effective as possible, because then that helps you to understand, okay, is there still a need to invest here a bit? But it goes back to the threat model. If you understand the threat, if you understand via the threat model, how that threat could materialize on your end and what controls in what stage of the kill chain could help you to prevent that or help you to detect it. This is also then leading to, oh, fine, now I may need to strengthen that control. Because from a threat intel vendor, I've recently seen that a certain thread has increased, a certain technique 
is now leveraged more often mm -hmm. or it's more likely to be used. And this is then leading back into your threat model, looking into, okay, what are my capabilities and controls mapped to that step of the kill chain or mapped to that um, technique so that you can sort of then drive your, your investment into the right way to close that gap. But it's, it's all based on it. I, I think threat intel, threat modeling is a really good basis to go into that mode. Mm. It sounds like there's a change in, well, essentially what you're saying is that there's a change in emphasis in, in investment from mitigation to prevention and detection, right? Because if you, it, you need to be ahead of it more, right? Otherwise you won't be able to, you won't be able to react. Fast yeah. Enough. So I think a couple of years back, there was a bit of a trend in the industry to say ah, prevention may not be as important any longer because we can't prevent everything. We really need to invest a bit more into detection so that we can at least detect it. I think this has probably switched again back to you need to prevent because need for speed, you will not be quick enough in just detecting it and then do something. So you need to make sure that you can prevent as best as possible and then use detection as the gap mm. or sort of the time frame till a patch is available mm. and, and remediation can happen. So it's a bit of a combination, but I think um, um, a lot of um, what we are seeing right now, all of us across the industries, not only financial services, is mm. really more prevention um, so that you can make sure it's timely. And then we're back to the automation point. Prevention usually means also it's automation. Mm. Something will just be done without interaction. So that it seems then that, uh, well, we know, right, that more and more automation is happening. Does that, um, does it take the human, like we're, we're in this need for speed, does the human, is the human still, um, if anywhere? <laughs> so, I, so I think that it's still necessary. If you think about getting threat intel and then putting that into your threat model, the threat model is something that you do based on the knowledge of your organization, knowledge of your systems and capabilities and all of that. Um, I think where automation plays a role is in the response to the threat, mm -hmm. not in how you model it, how you drive it, mm -hmm. how you're trying to um, find the right point for investments, where is a control gap. I think it's then to make sure that prevention can happen as automated as possible with an automated response. I don't think that this is something where human beings would usually work on it anyhow. This mm -hmm. is something that you should automate. That's why I, there's a lot of opportunity with automation. I think there's much more opportunity than there is a threat to individuals losing that role, that job. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more leveraging that to the best and then create that need for speed. But the human is still the, the model, right, of how the whole landscape fits in and impacts your systems Correct. still needs to Correct. be, you know, human intel. But then there is the sense, right, we're not gonna be able to prevent everything. So how does threat intel and the threat modeling um, that we do figure into, you know, resilience, essentially being able to operate no matter what, if it does? Yeah, I'm not sure threat intel plays a big role into in, in resilience. I think resilience is getting more and more focus, rightly so, because at the end of the day, if something happens, you need to be able to recover quickly. Regulators are more and more looking into that and putting resilience into the foreground and saying, this is where you really need to look after, are you able to recover? Um, I would separate the two though. You should still invest as much as possible in preventing things, being able to detect something before something happens. That time frame will also allow you if something happens, to buy time for recovery mm. yeah, mm. because you can react earlier, you can get stuff done earlier. Mm. But resilience matters a lot and it's part of your overall model is obviously how quickly can you recover. Um, a lot of um, exercises done by FSISAC, by regulators, by others are focused now more on if it happens, what do you do? Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure I would map threat intel directly to that, but it needs to be part of the overall model. Right. We cannot look at this in isolation. Yeah. What else do people need to know about this? I mean, the sort of like rapid speeding up of the whole of the whole cycle, right? Of of 
from when you know about a threat or even before you know about a threat, right? To being able to, to react quickly enough that you're not really impacted. So uh, I think it's that, um, that human factor and, and connecting the dots. I mean, being at the FSI Sec Summit right now and talking about that will help as well mm -hmm. because you get a new idea from somebody else saying, oh, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And you fit that back into your model. As more as you connect with others to talk about those things, I think that's an important factor in, in the overall model. Because somebody mentioned that earlier today. That's not a unique problem to our company, right. to your company. It's, it's a problem across the industry. So yeah. it, it comes back to our philo philosophy of um, if you share, then you're probably in a better position.